Hey, thanks for tuning into the Cocktails with Jim podcast. I'm here with Justin Mollica. We are both from New Prague, Minnesota. He graduated high school, <laughs> excuse me, in 2007. And we were in band together and, and some other classes. After you graduated high school, you went to Bemidji State, correct? What did you study there and kind of what was your path after college? Sure. Um, yep. Went to Bemidji State uh, right after I graduated high school in 07. Graduated there with a business degree in finance and a couple other um, areas as well. Basically tried to get into the financial world and ended up in the statistical world. I was actually a, a data analyst for a couple different companies for a few years for a couple different uh, consulting firms. And after doing that for a while, just kind of realized that I wasn't cut out to sit behind a desk and be inside all day. So actually, I currently work for the uh, city of Bloomington right now. I work for the streets department. I've been there for about, uh, about two years now. Awesome. Yep. You ran a food truck for a while. We're going to talk about two of my favorite topics today, barbecuing and music. So tell me how you got into the food truck thing. How did that go? And what was that experience like? Sure. Yeah, we had it for a few years. Um, basically, I kind of got into barbecuing through uh, processing our own uh, venison sausage. We started doing that several of them, 10, 15 years ago, um, doing it ourselves. And I kind of learned a lot in doing that. And that one thing kind of led to another. And all of a sudden I was doing barbecue stuff and kind of was making stuff for friends and doing different small catering things. And then uh, all of a sudden one day I was scrolling online and I saw a food truck for a food trailer for sale. And I really had no intentions of doing anything like that. I kind of wanted to just be a little fun side hobby to do on the weekends, you know, every once in a while. And the person was trying to sell it um, move on from it as fast as possible. is kind of one of those too good to be true deals. So I said, screw it. Why not? So, uh, we bought it, ran it for like three or four years and kind of realized that in order to do it correctly, we really, it really kind of almost had to be a full-time deal. And I wanted it to be more of just a little side project. I didn't want barbecue to become my life where I started, I don't want to say resenting it, but I didn't, I wouldn't enjoy it as much as I was enjoying it at the time. So, um, yeah, we just did a couple events here and there. We'd go to breweries and bars around town. And then um, once my wife and I got married and started a family, we realized that we just didn't have the time to dedicate to it. So unfortunately, last year we sold it. But uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was really cool. Something I would have never done <laughs> prior, but just kind of almost seems like, screw it. Why not try it? And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun doing it. About you know, a lot of cool people. Absolutely. I've had your barbecue before and your barbecue sauce. I remember I was, I bought a couple jars of that and it was pretty amazing. Um, I'm kind of an amateur when it comes to smoking. I bought one of those, um, you know, the master build electric that looks like a little dorm fridge. And I kind of got yep. putzing around with that. And I, I got good at making whole chickens and those were nice. kind of nice because you could eat the legs and the thighs and stuff like that. Oh, this cat. Sorry. She's <laughs> the star of the show. Um, and it was also nice because then you could cut up different chunks and I'd make like smoked chicken tacos out of it. So yeah. I feel like chicken's probably pretty forgiving. If you're new to the thing, that would be something good to start with. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, actually chicken is one of my favorite things to do. Um, kind of like you said, it's, it's very versatile. You can do so many different things with it. And, and honestly, it's, I, it's super easy to do too. Like, I found a couple of different ways that I really like to do it. And it's kind of one of those things where I've done it enough where I just, I know how to, I know how to make it, how I like it. And so, yeah, we, we love doing smoked chicken, a um, bunch of different ways. And that's kind of the cool thing about barbecue is like, I feel like it's a very forgiving way of cooking because to have good barbecue is to completely overcook it and to kind of, you know, it's not like you're trying to grill a steak to the perfect temperature or anything like that. It's like, you want to take it to where it's, you know, just, you can cut it with a, a butter knife, you know? So that's the other nice thing is about it too, is I, it's, it's almost, in my opinion, it's almost hard to have bad barbecue because it's, it, there's so many different ways of doing it. For sure. Um, after I got rid of my smoker, it was starting to, I was having issues with the thermostat and I don't know, I just kind of, it, it wasn't very expensive. It wasn't bound to last too long. So once I moved on from that, I of course did some research and I talked to, uh, yeah, my friend Josh Kyer is big into, um, smoking and grilling as well sure. and he kind of, i think he has a traeger the pellet style i know a lot of guys with those i know guys that have the green eggs 
Yep. Um, I know a guy that does the Weber Smoky Mountain, as it called, and yep. I just thought, okay, you're starting to bite me here. <laughs> I just get, I got a Weber kettle. I, for the, my first grill I bought, I was so excited about, we moved into our house and I think it was Father's Day that first year I bought a Weber gas grill and I was like, oh, this is going to be the best thing ever. And it was, but the thing just did not last very long. It started mm -hmm. to rust around the wheels and then I was having issues with the igniter. I had to change that, which wasn't too big of a deal, but I was just sort of frustrated by it. And I thought, well, I'll just get a, a Weber kettle. There's no electronics. There's no, there's like literally two moving parts and it's just the vents. And so there's no, nothing that can go wrong. And then I kind of started doing my smoking on that. I set up the you know, the zone with the charcoal and the zone <laughs> thing, and then you have the uh, the grate with the flap, and that method is fun, and it, it works really well for me, and I get really good results, so I am i don't see the need to buy some big fancy thing right now, because I can do it all right on that kettle. For sure. Yeah, it's, it's I've gone to, we've done quite a few different barbecue competitions, and it's really cool, because you see so many people doing it so many different ways. I mean, the last, the last competition I was at, um, there was, everybody was using a pellet grill or some sort of an uh, electronic smoker. And some people call that, you know, cheating or not doing it the right way or whatever. But I think it's a cool way to kind of get people into it. You know, it's, it's, they make it super simple. Um, so you just kind of set the dial and you kind of go and it's really easy, but I mean, the way when I do smoking and kind of like you're saying too, like the, the old school kettle with the the two zones and the charcoal, I mean, that's, that's the old school way of doing it. Um, no electronics or anything. And I mean, I have, we have two smokers that we built and they're just stick fire ones. You know, it's, it's nothing more than, than wood and fire and smoke. That's all it is. And I think, I think these pellet grills and these uh, more modern smokers, they deliver a pretty good result, but yeah, you just don't get that same result if you're doing it, in my opinion, the old school way, just the old, you know, fire and smoke and time. That's, in my opinion, that's the way you get the best product. I would agree. And I don't think it much matters what kind of grill you have. You know, if you got to, if you do the pellet or whatever, as long as you're getting good results and it's fun for you to do, then that's what right. it boils down to for sure. So, yep. um, yeah, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, music because we have some of the same I think a lot of the same favorite bands and artists. And I think we both really appreciate the nineties grunge stuff and the, I guess, new metal. I don't, I don't get too hung up on genre titles, but you know, those bands of the early two thousands, we share a common interest. We've seen some shows together. I know we've been to Deftones together. So yep. what, uh, what are you listening to right now? Um, that's actually a great question. Cause I have been trying to get back into listening to like new music. I found myself really going back to listening to the same music I've been listening to for the last 20 years. And I don't know about you, but I have a really hard time breaking away from that and trying to like find new music, at least. And especially in today's day and age, I feel like it's so hard to find, you know, the new music. I think, you know, the, the local rock station that I listen to, which I don't even really listen to much anymore. They play kind of the same stuff over and over again. So um honestly as far as like new new music i really don't listen to a whole lot of stuff i found some bands over the last 10 years that i've kind of gotten into uh, one band i really got into which they're pretty commercial now but i really got into bring me the horizon for a while um they're really cool i just kind of think their story is cool and all the different genres and ways they play music they're not kind of pigeonholed into one thing i really appreciated that about them and then yeah i just try to find like um just a bunch of you know bands that I think just kind of do it the right way, you know, and, and honestly, at the end of the day, I kind of just always keep going back to those bands that I've been listening to for, for 25 years, because I don't know if it's because it, they, I was listening to them at that very, you know, at that stage of my life where I was very easily influenced by the new stuff. And maybe it's harder for me to appreciate the things that kids uh, at that age that I was listening to, it was, were getting into. So yeah, I, I guess I honestly, outside of a couple bands, I, kind of just keep going back to the same old, same old for myself. I don't know about you, but. Yeah, it's funny. I, it, it kind of struck me when you said it's it's hard to find new music and people may be thinking, well, 
we're in the era of streaming and you can get you know multiple different streaming services and find everything under the sun but yeah it's still it is tough to find new good bands when you're used to listening to you know, you have maybe high expectations and usually if i if i found a new band within the last let's say after college it's usually been by accident that i stumble upon some different album or some band um so yeah i understand but it, it's sort of funny it's like it's hard to find new music but yet you know you, everything is right at your fingertips but i do completely understand what you're saying yeah yeah it's almost like there's there's too many options out there you know when i was younger it was like you listen to 93x and that's where i got my new music because that was really my only choice we didn't really even i mean we had dial up internet at the time so i couldn't like go onto a streaming service or anything and find it like i just basically had one source to get it from and that's it well like like you said now you can go anywhere and find all these different things and it's almost like it's just too much where i just kind of revert back to <laughs> my little my little comfort zone yeah well there's nothing wrong with that the streaming thing was hard for me to break into which sounds maybe kind of stupid but i remember for a long time like i probably had 200 plus cds and one of my ultimate fears was that my house would burn down or somebody would steal rob mm -hmm. the house and my cds would be gone and then what would i do because i wouldn't remember everything and it's so funny to even talk about that now because it's all it's all right on the computer i actually recently with the exception of about five i sold all my cds to half price books Mm -hmm. and i didn't feel the slightest bit bad about it because i don't need all that stuff taking up space and they're gone and somebody else can enjoy them that likes that format so that's totally fine i've gotten into the vinyl thing too now i'm trying not to you can go down a real rabbit hole with that with all the like different color variants and all the limited they get you on on that stuff and so i'm trying to build a collection of my all-time favorite albums and have them on vinyl because i do i appreciate the commitment that vinyl makes you give it you know if you're doing it correctly you're i think sitting down listening to the entire album you physically have to pick up the record and flip it i like that whole thing rather than just randomly throwing on songs and i like doing that too but i like the experience of vinyl i'm i'm into it i i totally agree with that that i think that's another reason that i have a hard time kind of getting into new music is i feel like you don't just download an album and listen to it it's like they release a new you know bands today release a new song every couple of weeks or month and there's really no i mean i know they have albums but there's really no albums anymore and and i'm i'm in the same boat as you like when it was me is like I put in a CD and you listen to it from front to back often multiple times, you know, it was, and you listen to it straight through, there's no shuffle or skip or anything. And same thing with vinyl. I've, I've gone down that rabbit hole as well. Uh, I totally agree with what you're saying about all the different variants and how deep you can go is really kind of crazy, but there is something to it. Just like turning it on, sitting down, listening to it and just like kind of almost having to physically interact with it. And that just gives you a, in my opinion, a better appreciation for it. And, you know, even thinking back to it now, some of my album, my favorite albums of all time, like, I don't know if I would skip through them. I, I would listen to them, you know, from front to end. And they were put in order that order for a reason, because the artist thought they sounded the best that way. And that's something that I'm sure is out there, but it's definitely not as prevalent as it was when we were younger. Yeah. It's funny too. I've some of the, like an example of this is uh, motion city soundtrack i don't know if you're into them but i'm i'm a huge fan of them and i they're from minneapolis and i've seen them live a roommate in college got me into them but they're they're the first ones that i've seen that are releasing excuse me releasing cassette tapes so tapes are coming back too mm -hmm. which i don't know if i could get i guess the nostalgia factor is kind of cool but i don't even know if i have a tape player or where i suppose on amazon i could find one but i don't know that's a little bit of a stretch for me but that's kind of neat too that cassettes now are back who would have thought Right. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Cause the things that you and I thought were cutting edge back when we were younger and all like the cool retro things that bands are releasing. I know a couple of bands too, that are releasing cassettes. And I, I often wonder, it's like, well, are they doing it for nostalgia reasons or to kind of like remind their fans like, Oh, Hey, by the way, a long time ago, this is actually how we used to do it and kind of bring themselves back to the roots a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in terms of bands I've found in the last, I don't know, few years periphery is a big one for me we've talked about that um mm -hmm. that they released their fifth album 
um maybe about a year ago now and that's that's been a a heavy played album uh at my house uh, um the lyrical content in that album is is really good the lead singer talked about how he kind of went through a divorce and his experience through the pandemic and there's some mental health things in there and it's just it's, it's a brutal album uh and if you can i guess appreciate what he went through it puts the album into perspective a little bit more um the last track is called thanks i'm going to pronounce this wrong no buo um which is the it, um if you're familiar with the final fantasy games mm -hmm. um no buo again i know i'm butchering this ui matsu is the composer of the final fantasy music so he was a big influence evidently on peripheries music and in this last track um they're they're paying homage to him and it's it's this big cathartic moment about overcoming these struggles and there's a line in there that he says something like the part of me that shines like gold and it's just this it's it's this big really cool moment but also in there they put words and melody to uh one of the themes in final fantasy 7 and i'm like wow i heard it right away because i recognize the music from ff7 and uh final fantasy 7 just got re-released um they just put out the second part of it on ps5 so it's it's timely in that so that's cool that album also has a lot of if you're a super nerdy fan like i am there's a lot of lyrical throwbacks and musical callbacks to other albums which you can pick up on so that one's been heavily on repeat i got into this band i talked to uh joe about it he was on the podcast uh, um the wonder years the greatest generation is is an awesome album i'm not going to go on about that too much because i talked about it at length um yeah those i guess those are the two big ones uh joe and i talked about coheed and cambria i started kind of listening to the speaking of vinyl i picked up in keeping secrets of silent earth and i have the next uh good apollo is supposed to be here on monday yes. so yeah um also a lot of disney stuff um i got <laughs> i got two girls at my house uh two little <laughs> girls and we love to jam out to the disney stuff i like what taylor swift is doing i think mm -hmm. she's just if if you're familiar with her whole thing where she's re-recording her albums and i i think she's awesome and i i really like her music i always have but what what she's doing with with re-recording the albums i think is just really really cool so I'm all over the map. I listen to all sorts of stuff. I guess country awesome. is not my favorite. There was a period of time where I want, I'm kind of embarrassed to say this, but it, it is true. I wanted to be Garth Brooks when I was like six. <laughs> Did you ever have, um, what are they called? Like tinker toys where you have the sticks and stuff and you put the different things together. Yep. I, I had like a cowboy hat and I had the ball tinker toy thing that I like wrapped in electrical tape and, I and it was because of some older neighbors and things like that that I kind of advanced into some of the 90s stuff and, and moved on from that phase but I guess it all started with country that's kind of my roots but not so much anymore yeah yeah, so yeah I that's kind of honestly how I started too because kind of you know back to what I said earlier like there wasn't really many areas for me to get my music so like I grew up listening to country because that's what my mom listened to in the car and I listened to classic rock because that's what my dad listened to in the car. And so, I mean, I remember listening to nineties country and like, there was even a period and even still today, like I really get into like the seventies and eighties country, you know, the old Conway Twitties and Johnny Cash and Hank jr. And senior, and just some of those the old school kind of just like sitting at a bar drinking because my girl left me kind of music, like, I don't know, kind of in a way reminds me of some of the music that I get into now because it's, it kind of, it's different, but it's the same. A lot of lyrical content is, is very similar. And so I think that's why I'm kind of drawn to that. But uh, yeah, as far as, as the current country, I, that's something that I, I just can't get myself into it. It's, it's, I don't know if it's because I'm getting older or, or my taste in music or what it is, but it just literally makes me cringe every time I hear it. And I just have to like turn it off as fast as I hear it. Yeah. Yeah. To each their own, you know, if it's enjoyable for some people fine but yeah it's certainly not my cup of tea so 
Well, hey, it was really nice sitting down here and visiting with you. I see my Zoom is going to kick me off one of these days. I'll quit being a cheapskate and actually buy a full version so I don't have to limit these to a half an hour. But <laughs> thanks for sitting down and chatting a little bit. And it sounds like things are going really well. And keep doing your thing, man. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, we'll catch up again soon. Sounds good. All right.